I mean, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great, Amit. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, first of all, Amit, I would like to welcome you to the uh, Global Power Platform Bootcamp, Mumbai, India edition. And um, uh, and I'm I'm very excited to hear from you today because you're going to present on a very interesting and exciting topic, uh, which is actually widely used almost in all our implementations. And uh, it's uh, the topic name is uh, Azure Integration Design for Dynamics 365 CRM with external applications. Um, so folks, in this session, Amit will throw some light on a uh, design approach of Dynamics 365 integrations uh, with third party applications, especially using Microsoft Azure. Uh, so I'm not without wasting any more time, Amit, I'll be handing over the mic to you. The stage is yours. Thank you, Sabir. Uh, so I quickly share my screen. Just let me know once you see my screen. Yes, it's visible. Yeah, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to present uh, regarding the Azure integration design for Dynamics CRM. And as uh, <clears throat> we are here, um, so I quickly introduce myself. Myself, Amit Prajapati. I'm senior technical architect from Mumbai. Uh, I'm working in cloud funds. Um, and so today's agenda, I quickly go through the agenda. So I quickly introduce about the uh, what is the Azure function, why we need Azure integration or let's say in general integration uh, for the multiple systems and what are the business scenarios that uh, are covered and what are the type of integration that we can do using Azure functions and how we can uh, secure the Azure function because uh, we need to secure our code base and we need to uh, uh, deploy our uh, solutions very securely so that no one can hack that particular solution, right? So uh, quickly moving to slides. So start starting with the code that technology is the best when it brings people, but here we are bringing the system together. So moving ahead, so quick introduction for the Azure function. So I'm going to go a little fast because I have to provide a quick demo at the end of the session. So it where the session is little functional and technical. So quick introduction about the Azure function. So Azure function is a serverless uh, executable, so we can say a microservice which is deployed on Azure. So let's say if you have Azure function which can process your incoming data from let's say incoming traffic, for example, a website and it can process uh, based on your business required and, and insert into a dynamic. So let's say whatever code base you have written, correct? And Azure function is used basically to connect the multiple systems to smoothen your business process so that you don't have to focus on the uh, data consistency or let's say uh, replicating the same data uh, to uh, multiple systems. And Azure, as uh, it is Azure function, Azure infrastructure provides a security add on so that you can uh, configure your Azure function so that. Uh, external attacks or let's say uh, external website cannot access your uh, code base or let's say functions. So moving ahead. So uh, currently Azure uh, function have three plans. Uh, first is a consumption plan. Uh, second is a premium plan and uh, third is app service plan. So premium and app service plan are server server plans, but consumption plan are the serverless plans. So basically what it means, so function, whenever you are exe executing any functions, let's say if it is a HTTP trigger and it is executing for two seconds, then in consumption plan, it's going to charge for that particular two seconds only. But in the premium and app service plan, it's going to charge for your the plan which you have taken. Um, there are some limitations in the consumption plan that is if a function is triggered, it will uh, by default run for five minutes only and you can extend it for 10 minutes. But in the premium and app service plan, you can uh, it has no limit, so it can be executed. Let's say unlimited of time, but it will charge accordingly. So let's go to uh, the Microsoft documentation for that. So if you. Uh, check the uh, runtime in the Microsoft documentation. You can uh, you can see that consumption plan by default is five minutes and so maximum is ten minutes. In the premium plan, the thirty minutes is by default. So let's say if 
you have a larger data set to process in the Azure function. Correct. So it can execute up to 30 minutes and you can and it can automatically scale up and scale down according to the need in the dedicated plan, which is app service plan. It uh, default is the same and uh, uh, but the in the dedicated plan, you will have a dedicated uh, server where your uh, app, uh, app service will be deployed. Correct. So these are three type of uh, pricing and plans and you can use uh, Azure calculator uh, to uh, choose uh, what is your best for suit for your business requirement and you can calculate the monthly price and choose the plan accordingly during your deployments as well. So now uh, Azure function can be written in the multiple languages. So today I'm going to only cover the .NET one uh, as we are communicating with the dynamics only. So we are going to use the SDK and uh, that's why we are going to deploy the Azure .NET version, but you can write uh, the platform in Node.js. In Node.js you can write uh, JavaScript and TypeScript. You can deploy uh, Azure function in Java, PowerShell, Python. Uh, but if, but if you let's say plan for go with go rust and other languages you need to write your custom handlers there is no out of out of the box handler available for go rust and other languages now uh, azure have multiple trigger points or let's say uh, input and output binding so let's say uh, there are mainly i have only used two but there are multiples so let's say i have used http trigger as a function or let's say timer based trigger as a function so in http trigger as a functions what it will execute whenever any of the http trigger uh, http request has been uh, uh, requested to that particular endpoint correct and then it will run the code base and you can use the input bounding and output bounding to pass your let's say if Azure function is running for particular time and after the completion it let's say it uh, provides you an output you can pass that output to another Azure function or let's say another type of uh, let's say you want to send to a blob storage so you can use the blob, blob storage as output binding and you can have a pipeline set up in that particular way. Uh, now uh, I'm not going to cover the durable function but I just wanted to uh, get the quick introduction of the durable function. So basically uh, an Azure function can be uh, changed or let's say you can see here one Azure function is uh, uh, connected to another Azure function here. Uh, the one Azure function is connected to three. So you can use a Azure function in a as a durable function. What it does you can uh, basically uh, distribute your workload according to your pipeline and you use your input and output bindings to uh, uh, do a process very smoothly. Uh, okay. Coming, moving to the next. So here is the main point why we need Azure uh, integration and let's say in general integra integration. So first is obvious that uh, we need to connect system for that uh, like we can connect the system to run a business smoothly. For example, let's say you have a CRM system and you, you have a ERP system and you have multiple teams uh, uh, that are only using few team members are only using CRM, but few team members are using ERP. So we need to connect both the systems so that the invoices from the CRM can be moved from CRM to ERP. So you can use that particular uh, integration to connect the CRM system using the ERP system so that your business process have to be smooth. No individual person needs to create the same record on the both the systems. Correct. So that's why to connect the system and to smoothen the business process, we need an integration. Then second point is to maintain the data consistency between the system. So let's say you, you have multiple legal entities and you want to maintain the same data over the different legal entities. So you can have a uh, real time integration connect the system and uh, data will be the same on all the platform and you can focus on your actual business process. Uh, now one of the major thing that integration comes along some of the systems or let's say some of the company still have the legacy system. So they don't want to remove their legacy system, but they want to go online but they want to connect your legacy system to the current online system so we can have an integration to on premise system with your with their current system so that all the data has been backed up automatically on on premise system and the historical data can be used if they want correct right. 
and having the integration in place with within the uh, organization or let's say within a different uh, different legal entities you can increase the productivity as you need to uh, you can focus on more business strategies correct and the coordination between teams will also increase because they don't have to focus on the maintaining the data uh, consistent between the system and they don't have to worry about the errors uh, that human do uh, while inserting the same data into the multiple system correct and at the end data is everything so all the data which has been consistent all the multiple platforms that are going to use as a report somewhere because uh, the higher management will not go into the system to check each and every data they will uh, look into the report whether the data is considered what is just one second. Yeah. yeah whether the data is consistent or uh, how the sales team is working so yeah so coming to the first business scenario uh, that i'm going to talk about so first business scenario is the real time integration between dynamics crm and external or internal ERP system. So let's say you have a project operation. Uh, previously, it used to have a PSA, correct? And you use your CRM team, use the project operation for all the uh, qualifying read, all generation of invoices. But uh, there is a separate team uh, in accounts which use three systems. For example, QuickBook for one legal entity, then Business Central for another legal entity and zoo books for another legal entity due to some uh, let's say uh, region based uh, uh, restrictions correct now they want to integrate that particular invoices or let's say orders which generate from your quickbook business central or zoo books to your uh, psa uh, psa or let's say project operation so what we can have in the quickbook in the business central and in zoo books they are the platform which supports the web books or let's say event driven uh, uh, subscription in that particular thing you can insert or let's say uh, configure your azure function url as a as a endpoint and whenever let's say invoice or let's say if any of the data on the erp system has been updated the http request will be sent to that particular azure function and azure function will process that particular uh, data let's say for example uh, amit prajapati accounts has been edited on the quickbook correct the request will be sent to the azure function uh, with the account id the account with that particular id has been edited please send that particular uh, uh, record to or let's say sync that particular record to the project operation which is a dynamics correct now uh, azure function resides as a middleware and it will get all the data from quickbook business central or let's say zoo books depending which system has initiated the trigger and it will uh, get all the data uh, prepare the json which needs to be post to project operation and it, and it will update the uh, inside the uh, project operation now sometime what happens your uh, sales team or let's say sales team creates the invoice but uh, CRM system doesn't have a capability to calculate the taxes uh, or let's say uh, other uh, financial information that needs to be calculated. Those are the calculation that needs to be done in the ERP system. So what we can do, we can prepare a plugin. So let's say whenever an invoice is created in the project operation, you need to post that particular uh, invoice to a QuickBook using the QuickBook API. And once the uh, tax has been calculated, uh, the QuickBook will throw the notification to Azure function that this is the taxes, tax information. And whatever the tax, let's say GST or let's say IGST, it will be sent to the Azure function. Azure function will update the same information in the uh, project operation. So what it does, the accounts team and the CRM team or let's say sales team will have a same visibility in the ERP system and the same information for the taxes in the um, uh, CRM system so it will maintain the uh, data consistency in both the systems now there are some prerequisites for this real-time scenario is first is Azure function will be a HTTP trigger then the destination source should have a sub webhook support so this is the destination currently because we are uh, let's say posting uh, from source to destination correct 
it's a bidirectional flow but you can have the uh, one direction flow whether the erp system is posting invoice from uh, quickbook to uh, po let's say po to quickbook so destination system should have a support of uh, webbook or let's say event driven method inside dynamics we have something called as plugin we can write a HTTP method and we can post a request from using plugin and there are different uh, mechanism also to send a, a, a HTTP trigger from a plugin as well. And uh, yeah, so second business scenario is let's say you have you don't have uh, any dynamics, but you have two ERP system where uh, they support webbook, but they want to. They are present in a different legal entity, but they want to sync the invoices between, or let's say they want to sync the sales entities between both the systems. So now, what you can have, you can have two Azure function uh, between them, and let's say whenever QuickBook uh, do any changes, correct? So it will send a request to Azure function one, and it will process all the data from QuickBook and send it to Zo books. And same we can do vice versa. So uh, whenever there is any changes in the Zoho books, Zoho books will notify to this particular Azure function and it will take the data, whatever present in Zoho books using API and it will send the data to uh, QuickBooks. So eventually what it does, it will uh, uh, make the data synchronous between both the systems. It's possible. So now not all the systems uh, to the functionality to uh, add your uh, Azure function endpoint as a webhook uh, URL. So in that scenario, what we can have is the third integration where you can use a timer trigger. So timer trigger basically you can, uh, let's say you can run the Azure function based on your particular pattern. So let's say Azure function should be run every one second or let's say every one hour, every six hours or let's say one day, uh, twice a day, correct? So when the ERP system or let's say any system doesn't support a webhook, so what you can do, um, you can uh, deploy your Azure function, which will run, let's say for one second, uh, sorry, for one hour, and it will get all the changes um, from the source system, uh, let's say for that particular, let's say, First initial instance was run at 1 p.m. Then second instance is running at 2 p.m. So it will get all the changes which has been done from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And it will process all the data and post it in the destination system. And here the destination is the uh, project operation. But in this scenario, you need to, while designing your system, you need to understand what is the change rate of the uh, so system. So let's say in one hour, um, the data is generated. Let's say 10,000 invoices generated, which is very uh, like, which is not possible. But you need to process that particular 10,000 invoice in one hour. But if you are using a consumption plan, then it is not possible because in consumption plan, it will only run for 10 minutes and it will not process completely. Correct. So then you need to understand that uh, like we need to switch to uh, let's say upgrade to our next plan which is a premium plan and based on that you can decide whether that particular plan or let's say whether the uh, design is uh, suitable for your requirement so based on the data which you are going to migrate or let's say the data which you are going to integrate between the systems um, you need to design the plan and architect accordingly now um, Coming to the point uh, of type of integration, let's say, or let's say the use case. The first two I have already explained. So schedule integration, basically, where you need to use the uh, timer trigger, or whether uh, you can use the real time integration where the webhook is supported, so that the system will integrate the data very smoothly. Correct. Now uh, there are some input bounding, uh, input and output bounding available. Uh, in Azure function where let's say if any of the files had been added on the Azure blob storage, so it will get notified to the particular Azure function and you can take the file from Azure blob storage and you can use the, those type of scenarios to create a file migration mechanism if your organization wants or uh, let's say you can write some PowerShell based uh, Azure function as a microservice which can manage your, uh, let's say, systems, which is uh, hosted on, let's say, some particular VM, correct? 
and you can manage your file system within that particular VM using the PowerShell commands. But this type of integration causes uh, some type of like uh, security issues. So you need to set up the uh, manage identity between the resources so that Azure function can talk to those resources to read and write those resources uh, particularly. Then data analytics, so you can use uh, remember the uh, the durable function which I mentioned earlier. So you can use the durable function to let's say if you have a lot of image that needs to process or let's say push to via Azure function because you don't have other resources available. So let's say if your uh, Azure function is available only so you can migrate uh, like process the batch wise and send uh, let's say 50 files to uh, one Azure function, 50 files to another function and it will process and give uh, to uh, give it to the AI or ML processes. So you can connect the multiple resources which are available on Azure and uh, prepare the pipeline or let's say prepare an integration for your business scenario. It can be the CRM system, it can be CRM to ERP system, it can be your server management, it can be um, anything that you use to integrate right um, now uh, uh, one of the major cons concerns while deploying the azure function or let's say resources in general resources on azure is whether your deployed resources are uh, what we can say are secure or not because sometimes you deploy some resources the port is open correct and it is available to public. So what happens? Uh, the bots which are crawling along the internet, right? Or let's say some of the hackers found that particular port or let's say endpoint open. They start to hack or let they start to consume your resources uh, and eventually what it does, it will increase your billing cost because you don't send uh, like add any spending limit on your as, as a subscription or let's say you don't configure any of the um, security uh, aspect on your particular deployment. So there are like three ways or let's say you can three levels. You can protect your Azure function. First is a function URL so you can uh, directly uh, protect your endpoint itself like so let's say if a uh, function is designed to only accept the post request. And let's say sometime try someone is trying to do a guest request, then Azure uh, will uh, deny that particular request. So you need to declare what uh, request ha it has been designed. Then there is something called as the function uh, ease. So let's say if you deployed a function and you define it as a, I'm going to show the demo for the same. Um, so let's say if you define a function and uh, it is the endpoint is visible. But if you are trying to access the particular endpoint, it 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 is not accessible because you don't have particular function key to initiate the call. So you can set up that as well. So let's say apart from the endpoint, uh, one once you create an Azure function, so uh, you create a function app. So in that you can set up the cross origin resource sharing. So let's say you uh, use your endpoint in some of the applications, correct? So you should let's say you have two websites and from one website only the request should be allowed. So you need to set up the URL of that particular website in your Azure so that if the request is coming from the website to Azure will automatically deny that particular request. So you can secure all your endpoints and the apps using the code setup which I'm going to show you uh, after the presentation. And then uh, as we are talking about the system integration, so uh, eventually you will have the credentials uh, which are stored um, inside your code. So what you can do is to have the app configuration um, and the key vault configuration and uh, store the con uh, your system credential in a secure way, correct? And and add the access policy policies to those credentials so that even you are a owner or let's say you are a developer of that particular application still you don't have the access to that particular uh, credentials so i will quickly show you one uh, demo um, so currently uh, so let me know if you see my uh, admin dot power uh, admin center of the power platform Hello. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. So uh, currently uh, in this demo, uh, I have this website where uh, anyone can fill up the form. And let's say whenever you submit that particular form, uh, it will create the. Sorry, it will create a create a case uh, and account and contact. So let's say first name and second name will be the first name and last name will be the account uh, contact company name will be the um, uh, account information and the case title and description will be the um, case over here. So currently, if you try to submit this. So let's say test and if you try to send this. So you can see that there is an internal server error because if you inspect the code which have been deployed over here. So let's say script. So in the function URL, you can see the URL is only there. There is no special key has been um, assigned to uh, like we are not posting any key with that particular URL, so it is not secure. So let's say uh, to do that. We will. Go to the Azure uh, deployed server just one second. OK, so you can see uh, you can generate the Azure function um, keys um, directly. So currently I'm just uh, talking about a securing Azure function. After this, I'll quickly show you what uh, code I have written and what deployment I have done. I'm just wanted this demo. So this is the key and you can see. And if you want to generate that particular URL. So. Once it is uh, enabled, I'll show you. Yeah, so you can select the key and if yeah, so let's say I go to the postman or let's say I can update the existing code. It's fine. So I'll go to my code and I'll update. OK, I'll just go here. Uh, added function. key, commit. Yes. Things changes. OK. So once it is synced, so I'll go on. It is synced. So let me check if it is ready. Yeah, it is ready. So I'll go over here and just refresh and just I'll try to push the data again. So let's say. Let's check if it is working. Yeah, so you can see. Uh, I'll go here and I'll refresh. So you can see the case title is there. So let's say let's assume one scenario. Here, as this is a front end code, it's obvious uh, that the endpoint is uh, not secure. And you found this endpoint and it is roaming around the internet. And you found that uh, your uh, consumption is increasing, correct? And what you can do is now how i am able to send the request from this website you can see this is the url of their website i have and i have earlier mentioned about something called as the course so this is a function app you can see and in that configuration if you go second sorry mm, yeah you can see I have added the CVRL. So let's say I found that this website is not suspicious. I'll remove that. I'll just save that. Let's see if I again try to submit. Yeah. 
you can see the internal server error and if you go uh, to here you can see the access to the http request from origin has been blocked by course policy because your azure function has been not uh, configured to accept the request from this particular uh, website. So whenever you are deploying any application uh, where you are using your app, uh, Azure function, just make sure that we use both the things. Uh, enable the function key uh, for that particular uh, application because whenever you create a HTTP based Azure function, by default, it is anonymous. I will I'll show you where it is written. And by default, this enable access um, control allow credentials is off and like this setting is off. So what I will do again, so I'll just copy this. I'll just set it over here. I'll just remove this and I'll save this. Now let's say you if you use this URL multiple on the multiple website, let's say or any WordPress website also, you need to add those uh, base URLs over here so that uh, Azure function can allow those requests incoming requests because it checks the from where the uh, request is coming. There are advanced version of those HTTP triggers. You can do a, a whole uh, like header check and many things, but we are not covering those things in session. Uh, but you can those uh, like add those as well. Now the second point was which was to secure your uh, credentials. Correct. So now sometime what happens? Uh, we write a code. So uh, so this is my Azure function code. So firstly, I'll I'll show you how to create a new um, project for Azure function. So um, you can either search over here or I have already uh, created recent uh, project as a function. So I'll select this and go next and uh, you can do next. You can rename the project and you can do next. Now you can see the access right uh, by default. It is it. It will be selected to anonymous. So anonymous means that any of the request. Azure function will allow any request. But if you do a function, what it does, it, you will require a function key, which is this one, this code over here, and it will be only generated from the Azure portal itself. So no one can um, uh, generate a new code and try uh, to access the URL. And uh, the function trigger is HTTP trigger. As I mentioned that I'm only going to use HTTP trigger or let's say timer based trigger for the demo. But there are you can see a lot of uh, triggers that you can use. Queue trigger is there, so let's say if any of the item has been added to the queue, then Azure function will trigger. So that is input bounding, or let's say that is a HTTP trigger that you can use. So I'm not going to create this project because I have already created the project. So I'll just close this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, now uh, this is the by default. Uh, code that you get. Um, so I have added only one thing that uh, whenever a function has been called, you will connect to the CRM service. Uh, so in the Azure function, you can use as this is a C sharp code. You can use the um, uh, nugget like SDK. Uh, there are two SDK which I'm using. Um, this is the uh, XRM tooling uh, core assembly to connect to this dynamic system. And this is the core assembly SDK to uh, do a service request. Let's say create update or whatever the request that you want to wish. Now, I'm getting the service uh, from um, CRM, and I'm processing. I'm uh, like consuming the request over here, and creating an account, creating contact, creating case entity, and uh, sending a created or let's say uh, 204 request in return if there is no error and if there is a return I'm sending a bad request if there is an let's say error while sending a data to dynamics right now over here one thing that you need to uh, make sure that while using or while doing any integration you need to use the environment variables what I mean by that particular thing so you can see I have not stored the credential in the code. 
it is using the environment variable and locally the environment variable can be defined over here in the local dot uh, settings dot json file you can see i have used uh, url client id client secret authentication type is client secret and whenever the execution code will whenever the function will run it will if it is running locally on this machine while testing it will take the um, this credential then if it is running on the server then it will uh once again i'll click on that uh, it will take the credential which you have defined uh, in the configuration itself so once it is loaded i'll show you and what it does also it uh, enables you to deploy like do a multiple deployments. Let's say if you have a dev, you can have a configuration. You, have, you can have a three functions, but if you just need to change the configuration. You don't have to change the code, correct? So uh, there are two things in the application setting as well. You can so you can see authentication type it is a normal text field which I have just written because it's not um, a major uh, um, thing that will hamper so just one second sorry yeah yeah url is also i have uh, put uh, in a plain text but for a client id you can see the keyword references over here so let's say for example you are a developer and admin doesn't want you to have the access of client ID and client secret. So what it does, so what they do, they ask that I will store the credential in the key vault and I will provide you the URL. You can use that particular URL as a reference in the application setting. So what it does, it will also uh, uh, make a trust between the uh, admin team and developer team that the developer doesn't know the credential, actual client ID and client secret of that particular tenant. Or let's say application which is come connect into the dynamics and so how can you connect that particular thing you can use the uh, at the rate microsoft dot key vault and you can add that particular url over here now how this url is generated so this is the azure function now we will move to the key vault uh, you need to create a resource named as key vault once you create that you need to create a secret over here. You can see the uh, two secrets are created. Correct. So once you click on that, the value is here, but the URL is uh, you can copy the URL and just uh, um, add in the configuration. But once you add in the configuration, it will not allow like um, it will not work. You need to set the access policy to communicate between this key vault and uh, app function because these are two different resources and they need to have a, a permission to communicate uh, on the Azure. So what you need to do, you need to go to identity in Azure function uh, and enable that particular system assigned to yes. It will create a principal ID. Then go to the uh, key vault and go to once again access configuration and go to access policies and you can see the application is already uh, provided a permission so let's say you can create a get permission next and you can add that particular sorry you can maybe search you can see so once you add that so the azure function get can get the uh, secret information from key vault. So this is the way you can uh, set up the uh, access policy and uh, secure your um, system credentials inside Azure. And um, one more thing that is left. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, remember, I have, I was talking about the um, anonymous function and admin. So by default, when you create the Azure function, the authorization level is set to anonymous. So uh, while deploying the uh, Azure function, you can just simply set to, let's say if I remove this, 
you can see anonymous is there by default. So you just need to change that. And just uh, right click and do a publish. So once you click on publish, it will create a. Sorry, it will create a uh, profile and once you select the particular. Uh, I'll show you how we can publish the so. You can see you can uh, import the uh, profile from Azure and uh, uh, click and browse the file. Either you can, if the account is same, you can just click on Azure, do a next, and you can select the. Let's say this is my resource group which I have created for the uh, uh, for the demo. You can just select and click on finish. Once you click on finish, it will ask you to publish. So once you click on publish, so can also set the pipeline. So let's say you can have the CICD pipeline to auto deploy the Azure function from different stages, but I'm just quickly doing a publishing. Uh, so I'll just close this one. OK, one of uh, one of the major mistake that uh, people do while creating an integration um, solution uh, is to have create a multiple resource group. So uh, one of the best practices, let's say if you are creating a um, integration for a particular system, you can you need to create a, a single resource group and inside that you can have all the resources which are uh, utilized for that particular specific. That is a like best practice to have. Or maybe uh, um, as per your need, you can create a multiple resource group for let's say one for Azure function and one for um, keyword. But it, it is better to have all the resources under the single resource group. So let's say if at the end you are monitoring the cost of your integration, you will have the resource group wise cost and you can evaluate whether the integration is uh, working as per your expected or the billing is uh, more than the uh, other third party solution and one of the best thing about the Azure integration is the cheapest integration that you can build uh, using your development team because um, in the consumption plan 1 million requests or let's say a few GB process are free every month. So let's say if you are um, having a real time integration between two systems and only the 10 or 20 invoices are um, getting generated and that needs to be synced. That particular integration is almost uh, free, you can say, because uh, you will not have mil millions of requests for that particular in, uh, uh, integration. So now, uh, moving back to the slide. Um, so, uh, what uh, other development tools uh, that I have used? First thing, I have used. Uh, uh, Azure, uh, sorry, um, VS Code and VS uh, Studio, sorry, uh, Visual Studio, uh, VS Code for website development because it's easier uh, in the uh, VS Code to develop, and uh, Visual Studio for plugin or let's say deploying Azure function because it has additional functionality to debug and uh, do. You can do any uh, everything in VS Code as well, but I will prefer to have. Uh, you can prefer to have like uh, VS for Azure deployments in Node as well, or let's say if you are doing any uh, other language deployments as well. And for testing purpose, let's uh, I'm using Postman, so you can see over here. So uh, you can use Postman for your uh, uh, local testing, or let's say once you have deployed the application to check whether the uh, your actual deployment is working or not. So you can test that particular thing using the Postman. Now some tips um, is during the uh, deployment you might create a multiple collections. So please save those collection because ideally what uh, I have faced sometime why I don't save those collection I uh, and forget where where is the collection. So you can have a proper structure folder uh, where uh, while testing. Uh, now one of the major thing that uh, people do mistake there is a file called as host dot json which is a blank file. There is nothing over here. So sometimes what happens once you remove this and just click on save and you try to publish or let's say deploy the Azure function, it will not run. You need to have a blank JSON file over here. Uh, 
and one more thing that uh, i mentioned that default timing of that particular uh, azure con function in consumption plan is 5 so let's say if you want to make that particular thing to 10 you need to configure uh, one variable over here i don't remember the name but they i guess it is a function time and you need to specify the 10 minutes so that it will increase the limit uh, for that particular azure function then uh, use azure calculator so let's say uh, depending on your uh, business requirement or let's say in integration requirement you can use azure calculator to uh, get what are the resources that you are going to use and you can have a monthly bill prepared so that you can see whether it coming in your budget or not because if you want to secure your credential if you are using your let's say key vault uh, you need to uh, you need to pay extra uh, uh, money for that then let's say if you want to uh, log particular thing you know in, enable the application inside in azure function they need to you need to pay extra for that so you need to calculate use azure calculate uh, calculators to check whether it is coming in your budget or not then use advanced option in while configuring so let's say if i go back to my <clears throat> Azure function. So let's say if you have three systems, like your uh, function is communicating with three system, and you have uh, username password for each system. Correct. Oh, sorry. So what you can do, and you have to uh, add multiple um, um, configuration. So do not proceed to like uh, create single single uh, structures. Just one second, it is loading. So what you can do, you can just click on advanced edit, copy this file and you can put all the credential over here and just click on save. So it will automatically add all. Let's say you have 10 credential over here. So you can just uh, name the credential, put a value slot setting will be false only and um, you can just save the file and click on OK. Now one more mistake that people do once uh, uh, application setting has been added. So let's see if I let's say I do test and test. And people forgot to save that particular thing and let's say close this one. What it does, it will not save this because you can see the blue line over here and there is a star as well. So if there are any unchanged configuration, it will be there. So please uh, 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 <clears throat> save the configuration once you make the changes. Uh, one more tip, I guess so. Uh, yeah, so don't forget to save the configuration after making changes. So that is a few tips and tricks with like because I have done some mistake while deploying the application, so I have learned from that. So there is uh, tips that you can follow for that particular thing. Uh, yeah, so that is my session. Thank you guys. Uh, you can follow me on this. Uh, you can scan the QR code and connect me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and follow my blogs and uh, the demo which I have shown you, uh, which is this one. This website demo, I have blog series for that. You can uh, replicate your uh, you can create this demo and I have full explanation of each and every code. What I have written, what I have configured uh, on my medium blog you can uh, follow that my medium blog and uh, um, do your learning from that particular blog. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amit. It was a very knowledgeable yeah. session for me as a developer as well. And I'm sure for everyone here too, to learn the different aspects of the integration design that you have demonstrated. So we have few questions in the chat. Let's take that up. So one is by Hitesh. Uh, he says, can we get a notification before a client secret is about to expire? Mm, I'm not sure about that because I usually create a um, um, secret for two to uh, for 24 months previously there was no limit but azure has put the limit while creating the secret that you need to put a maximum limit of two years so i'm not sure whether we get notified for that particular thing but you can set a reminder if let's say azure is not provided any notification you can set a developer reminder to have uh, like create a new uh, secret and just update in the um, uh, your configuration settings Got it. I hope that answers your question, Hitesh. 
another question hitesh hitesh has posted uh, regarding re resource groups do we usually need separate groups for dev test and production environment no now now it depends on your practice basically because you can have a, a single resource group and you can have a, let's say different app uh, function app inside the resource group let's say but you, if you want to track the resource or let's say consumption so you can have a different resource group because each resource group have a different region so let's say if development needs to be in the central us or let's say uh, some other region you can I will uh, like prefer to have a different resource group. So let's say you development in uh, UAT are let's say East US and the your actual production system is in the central US. I will prefer to deploy my production uh, integration on central US so that the latency between the system or let's say communication will be reduced. Correct. Okay. Okay. Got it. There is a there is a one more benefit to have dedicated resource group. One of the benefit which you already mentioned, I would like to repeat that again. The segregation mm -hmm. of your development, UAT or testing or for the matter production resources. Second important aspect is if someone wants to clean up the entire resources because those were earlier created for training or learning purposes. If you have a dedicated resource group, you can easily see the resource group and delete that activity and all the resources will be wiped out immediately rather than focusing whether this is my resource of production right. or testing. Right, right. That is also one of the benefits. Yeah, right. Thank you, Rakesh, for the answer too. Thank you so much, Amit. Uh, really appreciate your time and efforts that you have put in presenting this session. And uh, have a good day to you and hope we see you in the future too. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.